We're live. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Test take one. Hey, Mark. What are you calling it? It sounded like gay Mark, or no? Yeah, like gay Mark? What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about here, dude? Gay Mark. Wait a minute. Official, dude. <laughs> I feel you look proper. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, this is a test of uh, whatever this is. How does everybody feel? Can you hear me? I feel positive. I can hear you. Okay. And I'm um, glad to be a part of whatever it is. Riley? I'm here. I do. Chris? I hate my voice. This is terrifying. Oh, I love your voice. Okay, everything's going? Everything's going. <laughs> is it happening? It's happening. <laughs> Oh my god. I think we're live. <gasps> she has her notebook. Guys, welcome to the first test episode of whatever this is. There's tape on my microphone because I got the wrong thing. So that's what that is. <laughs> Tumbling. Uh, Do you have plans to air this? Yeah, I don't know. I might turn one of my many channels that I've abandoned <laughs> into okay, human a podcast emoji. Channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast. We don't really know what this is, but I think we should go around and uh, introduce everybody who's here and what our part on this show may be. Okay. <laughs> I'll, guess, go, I'll go ahead and start, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, you, you start, you start. I'll start. So my name is Jared, um, and what I'm bringing to the table, I feel like <laughs> almost like I'm in an interview. What I'm bringing to the mm. table on this one, I think I, I, I come with a, a very conspiratory perspective on things. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm often a skeptic. I, I like to deeply analyze situations, mm -hmm. but I also just like to shoot the shit, and I feel like there's going to be some of that as well. So I'm hoping to bring a dynamic mix mm. of all that in. You know, I just want to be just one of the ingredients in this delicious cake. Oh, on a scale of being canceled, how scared are you? Uh, <laughs> you know, of giving your real opinions unfiltered. I feel like the only way we can we can stop the culture is to be uninhibitedly honest with each other. Right. Wow. So, you know, I think as long as we just keep it 100, I, I'm not really too worried about it. You know, I'm going to keep it like 70. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. keep it like 70 is safe you yeah. know like, I'm, listen. I'm raw dogging it i'm just going in i'm barebacking mm. you know <laughs> dangerous so you got, you got a sheath so chris uh from his moan you can tell <laughs> like chris is the gay one no uh well there's you okay yeah chris is also gay chris yep. who are you hi i'm gay <laughs> <laughs> Diverse representation, straight by gay. Honestly, Mexican? the gay is leading the pack. Well, Peruvian. You're Peruvian. I'm Peruvian. Oh I'm Peruvian God. and German. Wow, yeah. work. Um, okay, so Chris, uh, Chris, who are you besides being Peruvian and gay? <laughs> um, no, I'm you. I'm I'm everyone in this room's cameraman except for Jared. <laughs> I'm I'm production for this. I'm lighting and camera and everything behind the scenes and on camera, which is terrifying because I hate my face and my voice. But oh, I love your <laughs> voice. I would say out of this group, you are probably the most woke. I would say that in a way. I would say yeah. most politically correct. Yes, yes. Like he is most in line with the values of that in which would be a correct person navigating the world. It, is that what woke is? You know, cause I feel like, <laughs> I, don't know. I feel I like clear. earlier, cause I want to, you know, I, I think it's an interesting topic, but earlier we were all talking about things and, and that was brought up how Chris is the most woke because he typically goes with what's politically correct. I thought being woke was almost the opposite, but it, it, it is kind of, right? It is being politically correct, depending on your political viewpoints, or which, view, which political viewpoints does it align with to be woke? We're also projecting on Chris that he's woke. He might also just be the quietest and not screaming his opinions at all time, <laughs> like me. No, no, no. Okay, here's, here's, how, here's why I say Chris is woke. And we'll get back to introductions in a second. I'll say it because we were filming a video at one point, and I was really hungry. And I was like, I need grilled chicken, and that's it. And maybe a sauce. And that's when I was like, oh, Chick-fil-A, obviously. And then Chris was like, I don't know about Chick-fil-A. And I said, why? And then you kind of like laughed, but then it was like a serious laugh. <laughs> so I was like, 
what's going on? So we didn't go to Chick-fil-A because I was too nervous to talk about it. Was that why? Yes, because oh. I was like, oh my God, Chris is going to like go into like a gay tantrum. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I drive him straight through the Chick-fil-A drive through yeah. He has no choice. You fucking fraud. This, that's what woke is. <laughs> no, then, no. Then, no. Fucking no, telling not. me that I can't have my grilled chicken no, because no, I'm killing gay people. No, this is the people. difference. You're like asking, is everyone comfortable? I'm like, I'm going through the drive through If you don't want something, don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like a casual woke. <laughs> because I mean, if if you were really woke, you'd be like, "No, Rylan, I'm getting out the fucking car right now. You can go through Chick Fil A. I'll go to Subway. I'll eat there." Well, would, listen. But you do it. You end up going through with it. I have. You know? I for the record, I don't identify as woke. I'm sorry. I take I, it back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Know I was just way. thinking about. They gotta have some of the best sauce, like the Polynesian <laughs> sauce. So, is which by so the way, delicious. Mm, and you know, you, you, and they're willing to substitute your drink for a nice coffee. Nobody does that. Which is generous. Although they've dropped the it's my pleasure thing. It's no longer their pleasure. And it used to be their pleasure. I know that the what? CEO or like someone who ran the company at the time like pretty openly said he doesn't support gay marriage and gay people and that sort of thing. And that was upsetting. <laughs> and uh, and the company has donated money to multiple anti-gay charities. Some are just churches and things like that. But some are like politically backed things that like supported like prop eight like yes on eight and things like that the bill to get married and stuff like that but the ceo apologized recently about it oh thank god what is <laughs> look at him fact checking beep, beep. i'm going he said he apologized <laughs> wait who Every, the, CEO the ceo for all the anti-gay Great. statements he deserves to be forgiven i hope okay I hope. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to eat chick for it <laughs> yeah and i think lots of gay boys do this is a lot I'm just wondering if they stop saying it's my pleasure because it seemed kind of gay, <laughs> you know? It's like, dude, there ain't no one else saying my pleasure, guys. Like, what the fuck? They just say, have a nice day, generically. Nobody mm -hmm. cares. No one's banking on them to say it. My pleasure is just, that's gay. You it know? Is. Stop, let's stop saying that. It is. You know? We should stop saying that. I don't that. think you can say that's gay anymore either, Jared. I'm actually <laughs> offended, and I'm leaving the fucking Wait podcast. <laughs> So I am not woke. That's what we're getting at right now. So uh -huh. that was, that was uh -huh. a clear moment of mm -hmm. unwokenness. <laughs> Wait, but for the record, I don't care if you go there or if we go. Like I, I was speaking Chris, through the through different. the the third person perspective of homophobes, though that own Chick Fil A. They could, they probably feel like it's. I'm not offended. Gay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. So what this is. <laughs> Um, is you know listen i did podcasts for a long time because yeah. i really do enjoy the kind of conversations you can have on a podcast because it's longer you can kind of get into it you're not too worried about offending i mean at this point well you're the one you were more offensive than me so i feel great like at this point you can kind of do that and then i can just you know no but that's like saying <laughs> yeah. you're no because you're you're in the end producing the podcast so if you're laughing at something awful you're also co -sign. I can't get more canceled than I already am. So I'm at a point now where I'm like, let's just keep it real. Let's be honest. Let's have fun conversations. Let's bring in some weird guests and talk to some people that like, I was so tempted, which brings me to my next topic, because I was very tempted to bring in somebody really misunderstood and controversial. And I have a list. Oh my gosh. Whip it out. Yeah. Well, one of, one of my people was Caitlyn Jenner, just I, be, for a lot of reasons. Uh, do you want me to pull out the DM where I asked her to come on my podcast? <laughs> what? <laughs> of course. This was before she started running for office and everything. <laughs> she never read my DM. Chris, what are your thoughts on Caitlyn Jenner? Oh. Um, uh oh. See? I don't know. I mean, as a gay Peruvian, <laughs> <laughs> see, so you, you speak for the gay Peruvians out there. What, oh, what is the no. general consensus on Caitlyn Jenner? I mm -hmm. definitely don't speak for any Peruvians. But um. see, he's woke because he said that. Like I wouldn't even think <laughs> that to was say. a test. And you, dude, you, you're by far the wokest like, one. I would, I am. Like I I don't speak for Peru. Like that would be like me saying, "Well, I don't speak for everybody with an eating disorder or like you know whatever my things are." Yeah. yeah. I don't think this is a good conversation to be like debating who's the most woke <laughs> <laughs> right it's like who's the worst person here <laughs> right. chris is like i'm great no Which is I don't love chris. no we're saying you're great i mean like in the court of public opinion that's uh, what we're saying you know uh, thank you <laughs> well those are our introductions he's um, our woke checker whoa 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 i was breezed right by yeah. Oh, right. Well, we were talking about Caitlyn Jenner. Okay, well, I'm speaking engaged. of Caitlyn Jenner. I'm <laughs> engaged to the person who's producing the podcast. Yes. And I'm just here for support. Thank you. 
I'm trying um, so hard not to laugh. My laugh is so obnoxious and I'm trying really hard Don't say that. What do you mean? <laughs> I have the loudest. Do you hear that? I, I sound like a tea kettle. It's very loud. It's, it's like a lot But of, that's what makes you you. Oh. I mean, you don't speak for everybody with a loud laugh, <laughs> but you laugh for them. Um, I've, okay. heard way, I've heard annoying laughs, you know? Super quick. And, and I will say yours isn't annoying. I'm holding back so much. Well, so well, much. maybe that's what we should start with because I, I have a list. I have a lot going on on this piece of paper, you guys, and I have a list of topics and ideas and segment ideas. But I think the thing we should start with first is our biggest insecurity about doing this podcast and why we think it might be a bad idea. I'll go first. <laughs> um, I think for me, I'm a little nervous to uh, talk openly again about uh, random things because I don't want to censor myself, but also like back then I was trying to say the craziest thing I could to like get people to laugh. And I don't really do that anymore. I guess I should though, to be entertaining, but I just don't think I'm going to do that. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 I... yeah. So I'm not going to be screaming crazy things. Jared can do that. Um, <laughs> I'm in. So yeah, my big insecurity is I feel like maybe, I, oh, oh, something broke. A light shut off. It's okay. Where? I didn't see it. This is real. <laughs> Is it just Should one of the Should I switch the battery? Yeah, out? you're fine. Should I mute it? Perfect. Okay. So yeah, my big insecurity is that I'm going to be boring and that I'm going to censor myself too much and also that I'm going to say something that's going to get me in trouble and then everybody's going to be like, see, he hasn't changed. Even though I'm literally 33, almost 33, four years old. So I've definitely changed. Um, and also not being able to get guests because I don't, but we don't really need guests, right? If we have each other. But like, is Caitlyn Jenner going to want to come? I mean, she's been doing a lot of things. <laughs> I feel like she will. I feel like she will. She sure. wouldn't come for me, but I think she'll come for you. Just, I mean, see, I almost said something <laughs> crazy and I held back. So I'm changing because you were talking about Caitlyn Jenner coming and we're like holding back. Uh, just, you know, round of applause for Chris, you know, oh. round of applause oh. for Round Chris. of applause for Peru. For Peru. Peru. What is a, give us a fun fact about Peru. For those of us like me that I, you know, I don't know <laughs> fun facts about Peru. So mm. can you give me one? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure potatoes come from Peru, which Whoa. is not like people think like Ireland and stuff, but I, I think they come from Peru. I'm not positive. I need to fact check that, but I think I, so. Like, oh, all okay. our dishes are Wait, like potato based. You have a laptop there. So do, while Jared's <laughs> talking about his insecurity, you oh, can look no. up if potatoes are from Peru. My man just gave us a fun fact and is fact checking himself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get more dedicated to the game than Chris is right now. That's Chris. What I'm you're going to get Caitlyn on this show. I already know. <laughs> I'm excited but about do it. Do you want Caitlyn on this show? Or Didn't Caitlyn go on Ellen and say she doesn't approve of gay marriage? <sighs> Ooh, that was a while well, ago. I guess you have a list of things to fact check, Chris, and that's going to be one of them. why can't... I think her stance has evolved since then, but why can't we talk to somebody and have an open Listen, conversation? I just have questions. I just want to know, in a relationship, is she a hit it and quit it type of person? <laughs> Or does she stick around for the long haul? I think she's longing. You know, because we don't who know. We don't know who she was in a relationship with last. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the potato update? You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Tell um, us. They originate from the wild Andes of Peru thousands of years ago, so they do come from Peru. Who knew? Yeah. Wow. So every episode, I'd like a new Peruvian fact. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and we'll make a theme song, and it won't be offensive. <laughs> And, oh my God, we'll do our first live episode in Peru. <laughs> I would love that. You'll I'm become a, a Peruvian icon. <laughs> Can would, you Google what Peruvian icons are? Jared, what's your insecurity? <laughs> uh, really, it's purely cosmetic. Okay. Oh. It's just looking fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But it's okay because I'm eating healthier now. Mm -hmm. So if anything, uh, my, my biggest insecurity is becoming a motivating factor to, to get me to be healthier in life. Wow. So I can't really hate a lot on that. All right. Uh, do I worry about maybe saying something stupid? Nah. <laughs> Only because if you've been around me for any, any amount of time, I just say stupid stuff sometimes. You, you know? do. Yeah. But, but the, it's all about intention. And I yes. think the intention behind everything we're saying is, is just to be honest. Maybe there's some humor in there, but I'm never trying to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, I avoid walking on top of ants. You know, me too. I don't even kill ants. I don't want to hurt an ants. I say sorry to dogs and cats when I bump on them. Like, yeah. So I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But uh, so as far as insecurities, so yeah. So over the course, you know, of uh, the further episodes, I should be looking better and thinner. And, um, <laughs> Same. You know. Good. So yeah, maybe you look good. So weight loss challenge. Uh, I'm doing it. All right. Well, you look good. Thank um, you. I wouldn't worry about it. You're beautiful just the way you are. Uh, Rylan, what's your show insecurity? 
My show insecurity. Well, you and I fight more when we're on camera. So like, that's never good. And then people think like we have a toxic relationship because we are always like trying to be the most entertaining we can be if we're making something. And a lot of times that comes off as you and I picking on each other in a loving way, but it comes off very aggressive. I think it's fun. And that's my toxic trait. Is I like fighting with you. I mean. Only though when people are watching. Yeah, it's not like we're, (laughs) we don't know. Fighting is my nightmare, but I like picking at Shane with my small annoyances throughout the day publicly. You know, it feels better that way. Mm -hmm. Sounds healthy. What do you think, (laughs) Chris, out of curiosity, as the wokest person here, (laughs) is that, is that cool? Is that like a. I mean, what are your thoughts? Seeing you guys from like an outside perspective, I can say that I think you're like a sweet, amazing couple. I see how in love you are. I see how wonderful you are together. Out, off camera, yeah. outside of the yeah. fighting, and, and, stuff. and I think yeah. the only so, so so when I see them fight, it's funny. Yeah, and, and we I, hide it from you, really. And oh. I think the only reason it even works is because it's obviously a joke. Right. There's yeah. nothing funny about people really talking shit. Well, no, most of no, the time it know? falls on Shane. Most of the time, people think I'm <laughs> being abused off. by Shane. No, go to any podcast comment section we've ever had together it's like i don't i know because they're always no, no, team no. team me they're team, i wonder if your audience would be team you oh no no they're Uh-oh. no here's the thing the way that he treats me oh my gosh <laughs> here we go the way no and i'm just gonna say there are gonna be fights on this podcast because the way that you treat me it's like you poke at me on purpose to get me to snap no you, oh my gosh you're do you want to talk about a, a tiff we had the other night how do I turn down my... Sorry, your voice is so loud and grating. How do I turn down my... Oh, head my head? Oh. I, I'll just move my mic back. Or no, how, actually, though, how do I turn down the headphones? Well, this is the beauty of you not knowing how to work your own equipment. <laughs> my gosh. Oh. I don't even know which one you are. Oh. oh, no. It's a mess. Everything's a mess. Um, Peruvian icon, Ernesto de la Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> From Coco. Love Coco. him. <laughs> From Coco. Benjamin Bratt, who played Ernesto de la Cruz in Coco. Yes. yes. King. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. That's in Canto, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> literally <laughs> the wrong word. <laughs> um. That's the only song I know that's come out in the last 10 years from Disney, and I'm about it. Oh, well, good. Um, but, what? We have mean? five minutes. Oh, Chris. Uh, hello, I love, hello. I love you. You know what you remind me of? We were talking, me and Jerry were talking about this before we started. Have you ever seen Wendy Williams? A couple of episodes, not a lot, but... Okay, I'm Wendy in this scenario (laughs) for so many reasons. Um, You'll see me pass out at some point. So yeah, on Wendy, you know, she's on her purple chair and she's saying things that are offensive and awful. So maybe you're Wendy. (laughs) And then behind the scenes is Norman. He's like the gay guy who's back there. And he's like, when he's like offended and he doesn't want to get canceled for something Wendy says, he just goes, (laughs) So that could be you. (laughs) That's you. You're Norman. And then you're... <laughs> Who are you in the Wendy Williams show? I guess Suzanne. Oh my God, you're Suzanne. <laughs> if any Wendy watchers are out there, you know exactly why that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the audio tech. I'm screaming at Wendy to wrap it yes. up. To like, yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, Norman is telling us that we only have to... <laughs> so we're going to take a quick little pee break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some controversial opinions from you guys at home. Perfect time for an ad break. Uh, if we had one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no this episode is sponsored by me check out my merch jared do you have merch check out jared's merch uh no but you know after a long hard day my balls smell like shit so i use this lotion no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> all right no, well, I, i'm just I, this is just for, for people out there watching i could definitely be the spokesperson for certain things oh i see Man. my balls smell bad sometimes uh-huh have you I tried think the world, the world would notice if I had uh, fresher, prettier balls. And I think it'd be a huge, huge play for anyone to get behind it. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, have you tried Manscaped's ball lotion? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wait. Are we, we're, we're filming, right? Yes. Okay. I took my headphones off because I can't. It's just too much noise in my head. But wait, before we get to the controversial opinion segment... Big news before we started recording from Norman. Are we allowed to... Okay, are you sure this is okay to talk about? <laughs> um, he said... Because if you change your mind, it's going to be a lot to edit out. No. I mean, he said, so... Okay, wow, this is big. So, okay, as you guys might know if you watch the videos, I'm obsessed with Chris's social life. Chris is into... What's 
the politically correct way to say it. Bears? My, my type, bears. Yeah, chubs, cubs, fat men. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got there. Uh, All right. Yo, you pop the cork on fat. <laughs> now we can say fat. <laughs> okay. We're allowed to say nervous. It. We're in a safe place. Uh, we're in a fat place. Um, so you like bigger guys. Yes. And I'm always... I think the reason I've been fascinated about it, and it doesn't make you uncomfortable when I ask you questions, right? No, not at all. You love it, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, makes you feel heard uh, and seen. The reason I like it is because I- smashed. <laughs> <laughs> makes you feel smashed. Oh my god! Yikes! <laughs> you know, I just like how my biggest insecurity is looking fat. The next topic is just all about fat dudes. Right? <laughs> Why do you think this cool. is where Shane's going? Oh my god! And one person's insecurity. Okay is another person's kink sure that's beautiful it's my yeah it's my so side. now i'm feeling objectified <laughs> so, oh, oh, so prior to being in a relationship like when you're just seeking out porn to get off you would search a bigger boy uh yeah chubs bears yeah yeah oh my I, I it's the only thing i've ever been attracted to my first crush ever in high school was like a football lineman uh, named Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's a, he's a big dude. I don't know. And I was just like the most turned on I've ever been in my life. And, and so yeah, it's just programmed in you, like liking boys. Yeah, y- 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 that's what you. That's what I would always say. Like, what gets me to ejaculation is probably like what I'm into. Oh, wait, what do you say? Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. Because now I'm freaking out with my questions. What? We okay. have great sex. What are you I know, talking but, like, about? What are you, what are you Your talk- brother's here. I. <laughs> but listen, you literally okay. We'll get to that in a second. Because what? Okay, I'm saying when I found out I was gay. If you're not looking at fat guys. We yeah. have a problem. <laughs> Wait, what are you? Yeah, I wouldn't say that you're a fat guy. Okay, we're not going to go there. <laughs> well, I don't think Rylan is the expert on the topic, though. Right, no, right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Back to Chris. Chris, hi. <laughs> so the reason I'm obsessed with it <laughs> is because as somebody who was you know 400 pounds for a while, a long time. Uh, I thought nobody would ever like me. I thought, oh my God, who? only a serial killer is going to want to fuck me. <laughs> like that was actually in my brain. I was like, a serial killer is going to want to fuck me. I'm doing the thing. Oh no, I'm doing the thing. Oh. I'm saying things I shouldn't be saying. Yeah. But that was what I was thinking. And I was, but I was kind of okay with it. I'm like, maybe I could fall in love with them. And like, you know, anyways, they won't kill me. So if I would have known back then that there was somebody like you out there who wanted a fat guy, are you kidding me? I would have kept gaining weight. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> always been chubby chasers, I, but not you just in didn't Long Beach, know, California. Well, you just didn't know it existed for the opposite. Cause like guys have always there been is. into thick women. No, and here's the thing. And I love it. It makes me love you so much because like the fact that you're out there, like trying to find the fattest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. Kind well, of. I you mean, literally it, said to it, me, it, it's you, it was like a competition. You were showing me pictures of guys that you've dated, and you're like, this one's bigger. This one's bigger. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that and then just happened like, to me. And then you were just like, this is the biggest. And I was like, wow, you're like so excited, right? It was so sweet. It's also real like big, in my opinion, for people with big, fat gay kids that are maybe worried about it. Because now that we don't worry. There's people like yes. Chris out there. They're going to really love <laughs> you for who you are one day. Um, no, but there's a whole community. I mean, there's a whole, like, there's a bear community. Like, there's, like, chasers, chubby chasers, people like me who like bigger guys, who are mm-hmm. thinner guys. And, like, a lot of bears tend to only like other bears, which is very depressing when I was single. Um, but it's, like, a whole thing. And, like, I always go back to, like, you know Siegfried and Roy, the, like, lion tamers? Like, if one gay lion tamer can find another gay lion tamer, we all have somebody out there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that was so beautiful. <laughs> as beautiful as it was, it was kind of like. So who's the lion? Ta- who's the lion tamer? Siegfried and Roy. They're both. But gay but lion in tamer. this metaphor, who do they represent? Mm. Fat gay guys. I just. <laughs> they're like, what is it? Also, just means one it's of them so get specific. My lion? That, I, I just meant that if they could find someone, I okay, I tried. <laughs> so no, okay. I thought it was beautiful. Okay. The reason we I liked it, I just. I was trying to understand it more. <laughs> you know. And once again, you don't speak for all. Uh, Thin she, guys who like fat guys. Yes. You don't speak for all of them. No. But you're my favorite one. Okay. Uh, beside you. This is what he always does. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So the reason we bring this up isn't to make Chris uncomfortable, which you're not, right? You're no. Fine. No. You About that, not at all. No. I love it. So um, this is kind of a big deal because you started dating somebody new. Yeah. And it's one of those things where every time we bring it up in a video or something, I cut it out because you're like, oh, it's you know, like, I don't want to talk about my personal life. But now you said you're ready. Yeah. And you're ready to talk about it. That's so fun. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a complicated situation for all of us. And I've never admitted that I've seen someone, so this is also terrifying to me. And because my ex is probably going to see this. Coming and that's out a whole of a 10 year relationship. Did your ex start like going to the gym or something? Or what happened? Oh. 
<laughs> well, I'm just saying, man. Like, yeah. What, wait, what was the problem? What, wait, okay, I always ask Rylan. I'm like, if my dick broke, or you know, if if my face if fell my off or something, broke. would you leave me? And so, which don't answer that because I'm too insecure. Well, I want to get to the bottom of something else after this. Okay. But with you, mm-hmm. if you're dating a thicky <laughs> and he starts to lose weight, is there a problem? No. Not at all. Like, once I fall in love with you, like, I love oh. you for you, and so it doesn't Everything matter. Everything you say but... makes me cry. <laughs> you're so sweet. Uh, that's beautiful. But truly. I mean, okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care. If I ever need to say something right, I'm calling you. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, next time I need an apology, which will be after this podcast goes up, <laughs> I'm going to hit up you to help me with that notes app. No. What oh. were you saying? You're mad at me. Oh, well, Shane, no, 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 I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying you were saying like, oh, if my dick broke off, would you still love me? Shane was trying to tell me the other day that guys' dicks break during sex. They do. And I just don't believe it. They can. If, if I it don't slips think so. out and then the person hit, hits back on it, it could either flop. This have way you, or this way and make a break sound. Have I, I, any of you had a close call yes. to thinking your dick was going to snap while fornicating? No, but but I mean, I've heard of it. I, I don't know if what I saw was in a TV show per se, but I don't think a broken penis would be like, it wouldn't be a first. If if your penis were to break, you wouldn't be the first person in history to break a oh, penis. Oh, it, it's horrifying. It happened to I, me. You know, you'd it, be in a large club, I would imagine. I just feel like if we were at risks of our penis breaking during sex, like we'd be much more cautious during sex. All no, I, that's why I am. Because it's happened to me where the person was doing was there and then it, they, it's made a snap sound. No. And it hurt so much. And then the person, it was so traumatic. The person was on top of me and, <laughs> and the person was screaming, what did I do? What did I do? And like that visual has never left me. Oh my God. Yeah. So it's scary. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so does that want to bring us to irrational fears or what? I guess we could do that as the next segment. I have a list of different segments and one of them was going to be, uh, I have a couple names for it. We haven't really chosen one yet. One was going to be new fears unlocked and I was going to have like an unlocking sound with like a scream. Okay. <laughs> but now I just might play, you know, what have I done? And I just play that <laughs> with a snapping sound. So it works. Um, so this is a segment where we're going to talk about some irrational fears that might be new, or maybe one of our irrational fears would trigger the other person to have that fear. And maybe you at home, Chris, why don't we start with you? Um, I mean, my rational fear is, is, I think a lot of people's rational fears to an extent is sharks. Like I'm terrified of sharks, but the part where it gets unreasonable is like I've avoided pools because <laughs> I'm so scared of sharks. Like I saw that cover of the Goosebumps book of the kid in the pool. Did you ever see that with the shark? Uh-uh. Anyways, that ruined me. Jaws ruined me. I'll be in man-made lakes and like there's no possible way. But then I saw Shark Night 3D where there were sharks in a man-made lake and they lived long enough to kill people. Anyways, um, so I'm like just terrified. If like the water goes higher than my waist, I'm having full-blown anxiety attacks wow. and like panic. So, so even like you, you and Big Boy are getting in the jacuzzi. You can't even get in the jacuzzi. <laughs> I mean, that's probably okay, but I'd probably still look like look <laughs> under the water. Like, I it's super irrational. So, like our pool right now, it's pitch black outside. If I were to whoa, <laughs> yeah, it's real. Look at you. If I were to say like, hey, go get in the pool alone pitch black, you would think that you were gonna get murdered. No, you'd have to like turn all the lights on, and even then, I'd be nervous and like. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty irrational. Wow. Okay. You, you guys? <laughs> the the yeah. shame. None of us are afraid of that. You're weird. Um, <laughs> no, I get it. That's really scary. That's scary, Chris. Okay. That's pretty woke, though, dude. Like, there's, <laughs> like, there's always sharks in the water, you know? Whoa. It don't got to be the ocean. There's well, always sharks in the water. Like a bathtub in a pitch black bathroom. Thoughts? That, that's probably okay. Probably. But you're not afraid of like a little spider or like something coming out of the drain and getting you? That doesn't scare me. It's just sharks. It's just... I did hear that 80% of black widow bites are male testicles. Wow. Because most spider bites occur when a spider comes in through the toilet Mm. and it just attacks nut sacks. That's kind of the (laughs) end. So... That unlocked it. That got me. And so they're, they're like fish? They can breathe underwater? I think they might just be hanging out under the bowl. (gasps) You yeah. know, 
and they're sitting there just waiting. Mm. You don't check before you sit on the bowl? Hell no. You don't check for spiders? Now I'm going to. I check and then I blow. So oh. Because like, if I blow, like I feel like the air is going to make them scurry. And I never used to be afraid of toilet snakes either, but then when I walked into the, ba- the guest bathroom and saw a snake in that bathroom a year ago, now it's like you never know what's possible. That thing could be coiling around under the toilet seat. That sounds like what like a little kid calls big poops. <laughs> A, a toilet snake? You never heard of toilet snakes? <laughs> I, I I mean I could I could gather what they would be. Apparently, but, uh-huh. it's a real there's thing. also what you put down a toilet to like unclog it. But you're talking about snakes that come in through the toilet. I was listening wow. to a podcast recently, which is kind of stealing from the podcast, but I haven't been able to ditch the fear of it ever since. And I guess some people are afraid of others under their car and slicing their Achilles tendon. This, I believe that's what it's called. And so apparently this goes all the way t- up to your butt and it snaps like uh, an elastic. It will go and then you can't move. You can't you're, walk. you're immobile. And there's like the only way for them to repair it is to like pull it all the way back down. And so I haven't been able to walk mm. soundly thinking uh, that that could snap at any time. And my whole life is just flashed before me. I'm about to fulfill my Wendy destiny and pass out. I feel like woozy. <laughs> I'm serious. And the way they were talking about it, it just seems like the worst pain in the world. Okay. Ah. Uh, Jared, do you have any fears that are not related to butt snapping <laughs> weird things that scare me? Uh, you know, the only thing that I'm really afraid of that isn't illogical, I think heights mm. is what creeps me out the most. And actually, I was at a a high rise apartment in LA the other day. Why? And uh, eh, for business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was a lunch day. We're going to need to hear about this. Well, no, it was a very, well, this dude, very successful. And I had some product to show him. And I went to this. <laughs> Not helping. But okay. Hey, I mean, whatever you want to think, it, maybe it's that. So we were on the 37th floor of this apartment complex. And he's like, hey, you got to see my view. You know, it's like amazing view. And I could already see it, and I'm afraid of heights, so I don't really want to walk outside. But we walk out onto this patio that was maybe four or five feet, you know, not very big. And we're looking out, and I'm like, wow, dude, like, look, there's a staple Center and, you know, all this stuff. He's like, yeah, dude, the dude above me just actually jumped off last week. And I was like, what the fuck? And it just made me feel so creepy, you know? <laughs> and then I started thinking, like, what it, like, because these apartments are probably $10,000 a month. More. So, so maybe more. It could have been this guy. You know, what if this was the ultimate plan? Go rent this apartment for like six months, figure out a way to not pay rent. He knew exactly how high he had to be to jump and for it to work mm-hmm. out. Because let's say you're, you're balling out on the 20th floor. You might just cripple yourself. You know, you might, you might not really fulfill the deed. <laughs> but I don't know why, but when he said that, and it wasn't just like me formulating a story in my head. It was, I was almost standing there feeling like the moment when it happened. And I felt like this was someone yeah. that just wanted to live that life for like three, six months. They calculated it out and boom, that's it. And then uh, I was like, yeah, I'm cool to go inside now, bro. You know, I don't really want to stand out here anymore. This is kind of creepy. No, you Knowing didn't. that I could have been out here a week ago and somebody was just going to fly by me. <laughs> that's oh creepy. God. And is it a myth you die in the air if you're high enough or that's is it myth. on impact? But it would happen so fast it, on impact no, that you wouldn't even okay, know. Okay, I've first of all, Chris, now is the time where you do the, the Norman thing where you go, I didn't because <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a lot. Um Well, I'm just curious. There's yeah, lots no, of scenarios. Th- that is a myth, because I used to be afraid of getting sucked out of a plane. And then I somebody was like, Oh, you would die before you even hit the ground because you're so high up and you're falling and then your heart would stop. And I was like, Okay, that's cool. But then somebody I know was like, No, that's a myth. You die when you hit the ground. You are alive for that entire time where you're falling. And then that moment you hit the ground, you feel it and it's pain. And then you're dead. So now. So Jared's right. Had that person not been high enough and you're just paralyzed, it's like, oh my gosh. So Uh, did you look into who it was or what happened or no? You know, uh, I don't know why. That'd be a weird thing to lie to me about. So I got to imagine he's being honest. (laughs) But but I think whoever owns this apartment complex was probably like, let's not let this get out. The people are jumping off of our building. Yeah, do they have to say to the next people that are renting like, oh, somebody jumped out of this apartment? I don't think places have to disclose unless you ask. So he didn't die in the apartment. 
I know, oh, but if I'm moving into a high rent, rise, you're not I'm now the- asking, <laughs> like, hey, has anything <laughs> happened over this balcony? Chris, are you are you Googling it? Well, I was just saying, there's a website called diedinhouse.com where you can see if someone died in your house. Oh, great. Okay, <laughs> let's not check ours? this one. Oh, no. I want to know. I don't. Why not? I'm perfectly happy not knowing. It might change the course of my life if I know that. It might cost money. Oh, no. Have you heard... See if there's any free deaths. Before I forget, uh, just on that note of, of you talking about falling out of a building and not dying until you hit the ground, I did see that this man created a roller coaster that it took you up high enough, like 500 feet up, and it dropped you down an insane incline or decline, I guess you would say. And it had a succession of whoop de whoops that caused so much G force for a specific amount of time that it was called the death, ro- like the death roller coaster, because one ride on it would kill you because your body wouldn't be able to withstand it. But it'd be super fun for the first half. And this was supposed to be a way to humanely euthanize people. I saw that. I, yeah, I saw that in a documentary. And I was like, because it is interesting because if, okay, I guess we shouldn't go here. Well, but when you think about it, if I am at a point in my life where I don't want to be alive anymore. <laughs> okay. <hold on. laughs> How do I frame this? Okay. If I'm old and I have a disease and it's like take time is ticking and, and it's a really painful disease. And, you know, maybe I want some assistance and dying. Right. If somebody was like, you can get on this roller coaster, that's so fucking fun, and then you die at the end. Would you be mad if I took it, took you on the roller coaster? If I took you up, like, hey, dude, we're going to go to a roller coaster. Yeah, fuck yeah. Because I, I, I knew, because I knew, like, I don't think he had, just like when you got to put a dog Wait down. Wait a minute. Like, like, the dog don't tell you, man. You got to make the decision. It hasn't eaten in three days. I can't see my dog get, you know, to that point. Uh-huh. What if it was like, I don't think Shane has the guts to tell me, but like he might enjoy this roller coaster. And you, we could have the f- most fun day ever. Just so like a so whole. So now you're both dying or would, you're putting him in the cart and saying, have fun. I'd have you sign something first. You know? <laughs> Did you uh, hear about the assisted suicide pods? What? There's in uh, Switzerland, someone made uh, assisted suicide pods that you this go is- in and it gently like. Rocks you to big shot business to sleep forever. Ah. I don't think it's been a. He made them. I don't think it's been like legally approved yet. But they're testing it and trying to get it legally approved. What for people that want want to end their lives? I peacefully. don't know about this. I think we've got to pivot. <laughs> I, 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 I I will say I think Oregon right now is one of the only states, and maybe like Massachusetts, where you can. I saw it in a show. I believe it was called Casual. And uh, it was like the old matriarch of the family that he got a terminal disease. And he came to their house, the family's house, and he took X amount of pills. And within like 30 minutes, it was done, you know. And, and, and to be honest, I do think it, it, it's a very controversial topic, of course. But I think it's who it's your choice. You know, if it's something that you feel you would rather do than live out the next year or six months of your life in agonizing pain and wither away. I mean, I think you should have a choice to do that. Uh, I bet you're saying if you're like sick or or old or yeah, just in yeah. general. I'm not saying like, dude, my, my girl dumped me, you know, and I'm like bumming out. I, you know, I want to hit this roller coaster. <laughs> like I, like, oh we, like I, any, anyone that's in a position to rebuild, I think they should. But Thank like, you. that's why I was talking about in the show, the dog. in a oh. show, but even a dog. I mean, if like I had a dog that was 14 years old that could barely walk and all this stuff, like yes. how humane is it for me just to watch my dog suffer for, three more weeks because it's too sad for me to watch it go. And I agree. I just didn't know under what circumstances, because I think if you're young with a promising future or even not young, but capable of a future, probably. Oh yeah. Like I wouldn't, if my kid's having a bad day at school or something, you know, I'm going to be like, well, son, you know, there's always the roller coaster, you know, (laughs) or, you know, grandpa, I'm not, I'm not promoting it as like, uh, you know, a cure for any, you know, right. Typical things. <laughs> Listen, we're we're an anti-suicide yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would That's say that. Kinda, yeah, you know, I'm against <laughs> murder. Uh huh. I'm against all that shit. I just want to put it out there. I'm super Same. against it. Me too. Right. Same. I just want people to know where I stand. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Chris, has anybody died in our house? <laughs> <laughs> I can't search. It costs money. How what? Much? How much? I think it's like 24 bucks. 24 bucks? Yeah. Not worth it. How about this? Really For $10, dark. I'll guess. 
<laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> well, I feel like, uh, you know, this is kind of a good segue, huh, maybe. Into uh, anything else. Into anything else. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so on the uh, at Shane Dawson podcast Instagram account, uh, I asked for your guys' controversial opinions, and they would be completely anonymous. And oh my God, some of them were pretty offensive. And I don't really get offended by anything. And even I was like, whoa, like somebody type that. So I think it might be fun uh, if... I gave Jared my phone. I haven't seen these. And I said, go through and screenshot some interesting controversial opinions anonymously from people. And maybe we can get our reactions on it um, and see where we land on the spectrum of controversy. (sighs) So that was a grand introduction. Uh Uh-huh. Unfortunately, I feel like I didn't get the assignment when I was looking through. I don't know if I got as deep controversial thoughts is uh, maybe you were hoping but okay. I, I did get some that I felt worthy of, of talking on so the first one and this was written by Marcos no but anonymous I'm just fine. No. it's anonymous <laughs> it's anonymous okay yeah, yeah, yeah. you know Marcos <laughs> no I'm just kidding it's not you sprinkles are gross and they should stay away from ice cream fuck off amen right what you well, always wow. eat my sprinkles that I get. Oh my gosh, wow. I'm always cleaning your sprinkles. Don't make me get into this again. I've already trashed you on my podcast for this. <laughs> wow. That's the only topping. When I go to Menchie's, one time at Menchie's actually, cake batter, vanilla ice cream, mm. enough fucking sprinkles where in every bite it's a 50-50 mm. ice cream. Just, I'm just I'm salivating. I'm mm. getting excited mm. talking about it. But uh, when the person at the register saw me, he actually went, wow. And I was like, I don't know if I should be offended or not. <laughs> But I don't care because I just made the most delicious ice cream ever, full of fucking sprinkles. Yeah. So whoever said that, well, here's eat a bag thing. of shit. If you get, I don't, the, I don't agree. <laughs> if you shit. get the soft sprinkles, yeah. I will indulge. The hard ones that are crunchy and miserable, no. And then I looked at the sugar the fuck content. Is a soft sprinkles. Yeah, what does that mean? They're like the chewy ones. There's there's a difference. Raisin. Shane has had an array <laughs> of sprinkle types. And there's really good ones and there's really bad ones. And then they all are all sugar. And I didn't realize that. That's and literally what sprinkles are. So it's I'm boycotting sugar. them now. I didn't realize I was just consuming oh, sugar. The, uh, okay. What's another controversial take? I just thought of something. Okay. Yeah, it's so off now. It's a, I'm going to save it, actually. It's a bit, it, it was, what's your favorite Leonardo DiCaprio movie? <sighs> Titanic. What are yeah. you talking about? I was uh, going to say, is it The Reverend? Never seen it. Because it's about I, a man inside of a bear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was too far. I was gonna say The Departed, but all right. Okay. Well, that's afterward when, <laughs> when he comes out. Hopefully, no. uh, hopefully <laughs> unbroken. Hopefully unbroken. Hopefully. Hopefully unbroken. So this one is specifically for you. Oh. I read this and I thought I need to know what Shane thinks about this. Friends isn't that good of a TV show. Try. I'm not even Gen Z. That's important for this statement. So I don't know what that means necessarily. Okay, let me think. How do I... Chris, how should I... Remember, we're against murder. <laughs> Remember. Against murder. Here's the thing. I, I understand when people don't like certain TV shows because they've never seen them. Because uh, there's no way that you've seen Friends and you think it sucks. There's just no way. If you've seen five minutes of it, you think it's great. And then there's the people that are like, Seinfeld is better, which I've never seen Seinfeld. So like, I would be one of those people that's like, Friends is better. But I'm lying too because I've never seen Seinfeld. So... I'm not going to hate on them. I'm just going to say they've never actually seen it. Yeah, sit down with an episode and really give it a go and get back to us because I don't believe you. Do you like Friends? I like Friends. But Whoa. It, but we're, we're also all old. Is it possible that to young people it's not the same? No. They said specifically they're not Gen Z. Oh, okay. What Time's is Gen on. Z? I know this isn't about Gen Z, but what, what did Gen Z watch? What is Gen TikTok? Z? TikTok. What are you talking about? Oh, all right. Are you on t- you're on TikTok, Chris. I think right? hentai. I, I mean, I am, Who's but that? I don't use it almost Hen- ever. Do you watch hentai? No. Hentai, and I might be saying it wrong. Oh, no. But basically what hentai is, it's animated porn where it's tentacles from an octopus <laughs> that are actually the, the phallic part of the, the program, and then the women have the other areas of which the tentacles go into, their vaginas. So it's basically women being, um, being sexualized by tentacles. Very aggressively too, <laughs> not 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 in a way where it's like slow jams. It's like aggressive stuff. And I actually drove by a car the other day and it had a sticker and it said "hopelessly addicted to t- to hentai." <laughs> I was like, "Why are you putting that on your fucking car, dude?" You and know you what think- I mean? Like, all I can think about when I'm driving next to you now is 
Are you watching octopus tentacle porn right now? First. You think this gentleman or woman who's not watching Friends is watching hentai? <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Because if, if you can't logically understand why the relationships between these people also different in their own way yes. and comical and humorous and represent a little bit of all of us mm-hmm. are not great. They're all then you must be funny. watching tentacles fucking animated chicks. You can't have, <laughs> you can't have a, a you can, I don't know. I don't get it. You know? I agree. It has to be. <laughs> so what, is it hentai? Is that it? So tentacle porn is its own genre, I guess, or oh, whatever okay. you want to call it. Hentai is just a broader range of like cartoon porn or animated porn. Okay. okay. So moving on. This one was just kind of like, I, I also want to educate people a little bit if we're oh, able to. Okay. We don't have to. Steven should never be spelled with a PH. <laughs> well, it's not because that's fucking Stefan. <laughs> You know, so like whoever wrote that common sense, it's never spelled with a BH because that'd be a different fucking name. That's Stefan. What about Stephen Colbert? Well, you're Whoa. the H. Or you woke motherfucker. You <laughs> me, dude. I think, yeah. Because it's not. So, you know what? You're right. Actually, we need to fucking be more aware of this. Stop spelling it with a fucking PH. <laughs> Stephen Colbert. Okay. Cereal does not need milk. <laughs> yeah, I, These are not what I was thinking. I thought thinking. you were going to pick like the, the craziest. Like, Shane, like, Shane's reaction to the first minute of these were like, people are going fucking there. Yeah, what, <laughs> and you're like, cereal. I literally was like, oh my God, we can't even say this. This is so crazy. Why? Oh, I get it. I'm down to this. Okay, but it's like, it goes a little too extreme. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. How about this? You okay. still got your, we could go through more, but I mean, I am cereal... <laughs> Does not need milk. You know, I, I disagree wholeheartedly with that. Um, okay. Well, wait. Give us one more one more controversial opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe make it controversial. Okay. Caitlyn Jenner is not a hero. I know we're trying real hard to get her on the next one. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I mean, you can have, there's different I mean, facets to people. She's still a world Olympian. You don't have to like her politics to think she was a great Olympian. Do you remember going to a train museum when we were kids yes with diane yeah backstory we grew up with a family friend who was trans and uh yeah we hung out with her all the time she babysitted us like we, she was we hilarious with, yeah one of my favorite people ever I, I loved her and but now that i'm thinking about it i'm like what what did we call her i don't think was the word trans or that wasn't like a thing right i mean it was but it wasn't really i think we just called her diane yeah, but I do remember when she would explain to us her past and that she had children and she would explain, you know, when she was a little boy, like she didn't hide it, but I don't know if we, she ever fully like, ex- it was just what it was. I feel, and she was still with the same woman. I think so. That when she transitioned, she was still with the same person. So it was kind of just like a fluid story of their lives. How cool you for know. her to just be an example, though, to just live in her truth. And it's not weird to you guys because that's just who she is. No, and she worked at uh, in retail with my mom, when women's clothing. And yeah, I don't know. She was just cool. And it was never... I think that's why it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to hear about people who don't understand trans stuff and what certain things mean. And I don't know. I guess, yeah, because we were around somebody like that so young that I don't know. I get it. Yeah. When I came out to my brother, he didn't have any gay people in his life. Like that was weird to him. And I think like, that's all I can compare it to. Cause it's my life scenario. Like I didn't transition, but like, I didn't fault my brother for like having to work through it and come to terms with it and just like realize it, you know? Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick little break cause the camera's about to go out and, um, we'll be back guys. When I get home from a long day of work <laughs> and my nuts just smell like shit, I use Manscaped. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I like it, dude. Okay. The last thing I want to do for today is a conspiracy corner. What I want to start with is something that I just feel so gratified that I was right. Because I've had a theory about friends. Oh my God, weird. I had a theory about friends a long time ago and I was right. If anybody's ever watched Friends on like, you know, reruns, especially on TV land, I can't even watch them because everybody's voices are like extra high pitch and I don't know what it is or why. It's like really annoying. It's really hard to listen to. You see, the problem is though, after the concert's over, no matter how great the show was, you girls are always just trying to stay awake. (laughs) 
And I had a theory. I was like, oh, I bet they're speeding up the episode. Otherwise, next time you're gonna find yourself sitting at home listening to that album alone. So that they could like fit more episodes in, or maybe they could, you know, f you know, maybe that's what they're doing. Then I was watching an interview with Courtney Cox from Friends, and she said this. Some people can't watch themselves. Even a show as great as Friends, they might go, oh, I can't watch myself. Mm. But did you have enough distance from it to say, you know what, this was as good as people said? Yeah, I, I, except for the ones where they added an extra commercial, so they sped it up a little bit, which I can really tell. And you can tell with all characters, but I, oh my God, <laughs> I hate my voice so much. But and that's because as far as my parents are concerned, Ross can do no wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is not a happy high. When it's not sped up, I like it. Well, that's not your fault. Isn't that crazy? I was right. It's to fit more commercials. Wow. That is so genius. That and is scary. I mean, not. It's so ruthless. <laughs> I mean, horrible. They buy the rights to Friends, which I'm sure is expensive, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna really make our money's worth." So they just. I'm just happy that it's like you know people make fun of me sometimes. Like, oh, you're just making up conspiracies. Oh, you're crazy. Because I had one the other day too that Rylan made a joke. He's like, "Oh, you should put it in a conspiracy video," <laughs> but I stand by it. Panera Bread. <gasps> and we'll get into real conspiracies in a second. But Panera Bread, like the bread they give you on the side, it goes moldy and bad in like a day. And rock hard. And rock hard. Inst <laughs> Honestly, it goes rock hard in 10 minutes. And I think they do it because they don't want you to save it and eat it later. They want you to have to buy more Panera Bread to get more bread because that's what they're famous so for. So because... dev devil's advocate, just really quickly okay. on that one, right. because we got Panera Bread a while back mm -hmm. and I threw the bread away, you know? And Sandy, my wife, was like, why did you do that? I was like, well, because this shit's hard, you know? And she's like, well, no, it's a baguette. You just heat it up. So evidently, if you just heat up the bread, it might actually do something. Whoa. And I don't know why the first thing I did when I found out wasn't tell you. But come to find out, this might be a, a bust. It might be busted. I so still think let's just something... get Panera bread, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was gonna say Chipotle there's... ranch flat bread, whatever we want to get. Right, right, right. Some bread. Fine. We'll wrap it up with one last conspiracy, and this one is actually uh, inspired by you. Oh, thank you. Because you asked me the other night at dinner, which is weird that you asked me this out of nowhere, but you said, "What does it mean when somebody sells their soul to the devil?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> well, yeah. And you're like, "Well, what do they get? And how do they do it? And what does it mean?" <laughs> Not considering or anything. So then I started thinking, I'm like, well, I believe that that's a real thing. And I know there's like, you know, there's history of different singers or people throughout time selling their souls to the devil for fame or whatever. And I think I was asking if Katy Perry did it. <laughs> why specifically Katy Perry? No, why, are you, why are you outing her? What? I, it's not a fact. I'm just asking if she did. I don't think she did. Yeah, but did her deal go bad? Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, if you're going to making... sell your soul to the devil, it better last more than 10 well, years. Well, listen, she's having a kid. You know, that's her soul. You know, I'm a Katie Cat more than ever. <laughs> I never even knew that was her fandom. And I think in my old age, I've discovered that I actually love her right now. I don't watch American Idol, but I think her deal's still good because she's making like 40 million plus in, you know, a season on American Idol. This is my ignorance. I didn't even know she was on American Idol. And she's got the fattest check of anyone on a contestant show, I think, ever. Maybe okay. Ariana Grande. So, came so this her. this speaks to your point. So, okay. So, uh, what do you know about selling your soul to the devil? And do you think that that's a real thing that happens? So, I definitely think it's a real thing that happens. And when we talk about selling your soul to the devil, I feel like the devil, in this sense, is the main evil agenda that's being put out there by the powers that be. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, the story that I think of when I hear that selling your soul to the devil is there's a lot of rappers it seems like rappers have this story of going to parties and there being these rooms and in order like you have to go into this room and you have to go through with this ritual or this ceremony um i don't want to get into the details of what people talked about it being wait what but a lot of the times it's just uh <laughs> the same kind of things they would use to blackmail politicians okay stuff of that nature like give a guy a blowjob yeah, stuff of that stuff like that. Um, it could even be worse, you know. Right. But, but and, the, and the concept is once they get you locked in like that, then you're pretty much a puppet. So selling your soul mm -hmm. to the devil means being used in a way to push forth the negative and the and the bad agenda. And, and really, what it is is just keeping humans on a low frequency. That's what they want. They don't want humans to really use their full consciousness and to really enlighten themselves. They want to keep you bogged down. That's why mainstream music is just all the same repetitive bullshit, you know? 
And uh, that's why artists, just to get on the radio, have to make certain songs that are radio friendly. Like, what does mm-hmm. radio friendly mean? You know, what that it, is mind fucking. You know, because like, and so but, we're we're saying it's potentially someone with a lot of power. So you'd have to be. That's what I was thinking. Though, like, how does the opportunity even present yourself? Like, you have to be of, uh, like, up and coming yourself to probably even be presented I think with the they idea. They just, they just have to see it in you. You know that you have the ability <laughs> to really have people gravitate to you, to believe in you. Um, it could just be you got the look. You know, because really they're just trying to get the message out there to the to the vulnerable, to the gullible, to the generations coming up. So then what happens if, okay, so say I'm a pop star and I just sold my soul to the devil and now my song is number one and everything's going great. What if I realize, oh, I don't want this anymore. Can I get out of it? Then you will be in a living hell, I would imagine, that they put you in through litigations to get try to get out of whatever contract you're in. Like selling, you, selling your soul to the devil is just the equivalent of putting a price on your art, you know, and your artistic mm. integrity to, to, because if, if I'm a singer songwriter, like a, a Bob Dylan or something like that, um, and then I sign to a label and they're like, you got to sing about this from here on out, you know, like we don't want you saying just like anybody right now that's worried about saying certain shit, I guess, you know, but it's only, it's more agenda driven, you know? So that's selling your soul to the devil is in my opinion, just, signing a contract that says i am at your service now and whatever the label tells me to do whatever my agent tells me to do so i i, I think a lot of people realize they're they sold their soul to the devil and that's why they want to get out of the record deals so it's not know? something you can just do like you can't just say like oh i would oh my i don't even want to say it out loud but like if i wanted to do that i couldn't just ask the devil for that maybe you could and it would pr- an opportunity would present that itself. is so sc- that is actually the scariest thing because ever. i mean it's man it's like the idea of manifestation i know you're not really big into that but it's still like if you're speaking that into an existence like i will do what i mean not big into that i, I think I, crystals on me right now yeah, but the devil doesn't say hey i'm the devil you shouldn't do this he comes in in, in the in the presence of a snake and he persuades you to eat the apple, you know? He's very persuasive, and so if they wanted to get you, they would probably bring someone into your life that was able to relate to you on a whole nother level, get really close with you, uh, right. someone that you felt like, just almost like they're recruiting you for a cult, you know? They're making you feel best friendly with them, like um, almost making you distrustful of everybody else because of how much you trust them. And then they would probably start steering you in a direction. You know, it, it's almost like handlers. Oh, police! Get <laughs> out of my life. Face. It's, almost, it's like handlers and, and and people that come into these like child celebrity fucking lives when they're young and they try to guide them in all these weird directions. You know what I mean? Like, I think those are the people that got the contracts and, and Satan sending the, those people out. You know, that's how I look at it. Well. <laughs> So it's not even a theory at this point. It's just a real thing. Possibly. But it can also be like as simple as just signing a really bad contract, right? I mean, it's like there's a wide range of this. Well, yeah. I mean, if... Like, like uh, a metaphor for signing a bad contract. It, it, okay, Chris. You know, you, you got all this cool lighting stuff and these cameras. If someone came up to you and said, hey, Chris, we're going to give you $20 million a month, but you have to film nothing but snuff videos and blackmail videos for us. And that's the situation. Are you going to do it? Are you going to use all this equipment you have for those purposes? Or would you rather film stuff like this? You know what I mean? I'd rather film stuff like this. You better not leave. I, You're going to leave f- to film snuff movies? No. <laughs> with the devil? <laughs> no. Are we not enough? I, I got to go. <laughs> or maybe they just want you to film aimless propaganda and that's what you're using your talent with, you know? Well, I always wondered that about, not to get into, because I'm afraid and I, I'm not even going to say the name of it, but there is a religion that people are very against. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And that religion has like a lot of video shoots. And yeah. I guess the craft service is really good. And I've, <laughs> I've talked to actors who are like, oh, I just got off set. I was working on a, you know, religious video. And I was like, oh, that's kind of scary. Are you like scared? Is it weird? And they're like, I mean but they pay really well and the food's really good. And like, I've acted for them. I auditioned. No. For them. Yeah. I've acted for a bunch of their stuff. The pay is great. And they do. So you already sold your soul to the devil. Kind of. I don't think I'm not a part of their thing at all. I just acted and got my check and left. 
Uh, you were a little side piece for the devil. For <laughs> yeah, you know, if they would have offered you, you like, were a game call. if they would have offered you a, t- uh, oh, are we talking about well, like Bill I, Nye or I'm what are we talking like, about? The ultimate of that is like the successes we know from that. Like they've really signed over. I don't know if that's quote unquote the devil, but they're hugely successful. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to have them show up outside of our house. So yeah. Anyways. Whew. Um, well, I'm happy that, uh, you're here <laughs> and alive. Well, there you guys go. I mean, we kind of covered most of the stuff on my list. I don't know. How to, I feel like it went well. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm also wondering like how Caitlyn Jenner <laughs> would fit into this scenario. Like where would she be? Oh, I'm ready. She can have my spot. I'll sit on the <laughs> can couch. Can you imagine Caitlyn comes over and we're like, just hop on the beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, okay. I will say that it took a little bit for me to get hard. But okay. once I got hard, guys, <laughs> I really enjoyed what we did together tonight. Well, if, let us know down in the comments. What do you want us to do? Got any ideas? Got any conspiracies? Any unpopular opinions? And yeah, if you guys have any guest ideas for people you want on the show, let us know. Why and not? it doesn't matter who they are because we're not bringing anybody on until Caitlyn Jenner is on this show. <laughs> I feel like we're on a guest hunger strike until we get Caitlyn Jenner sitting here talking to us. I Fuck know. it. I'm good with... We could have other people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wait on Caitlyn. I know she could just walk over and we could talk, but I don't want... I don't want... She's a busy... She's a busy lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know? She golfs. <laughs> you know? I don't oh, want to put too no. much pressure on her. All right. All right. <laughs> well, hope you guys have fun. Uh, what, whatever this was, I'll get a new mic. I promise. Hit the yellow one. What? The yellow button. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Crickets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh.